Yes. And then I went to tell Charlie about it, and Charlie was like, I bought two bags of candy yesterday. He ate the same candy you ate. My brother can't have candy. Like, now I, that's all I can think about. I'm, I can't right, decide. Help. I don't even know what I'm going to buy when I go. Like, I'm thinking that purple bag and then Skittles thing, but I'm worried they won't have them. Have a great healthy day. Mm -hmm. It's all out the window, thanks to you, sir. Hey, welcome to the Closing Beat, everybody. How we doing? Happy happy Wednesday, <laughs> right? Woo, what a day in the markets, huh? Busy one. We've got a lot to talk about here today and uh, maybe give you a little history lesson as well. Um, we'll see what happens. Even after hours, um, the market has uh, continues to fall a little bit. So we'll cover that um, in plenty more. Also, tomorrow, our Wine and Wealth class for clients is going to be, a, we're going to call it the State of the Markets Address. So we'll go over some of the stuff, uh, portfolio updates and things that are happening uh, here, uh, because as we pull back, it's getting exciting now. I think a lot of people have been waiting for this pullback, and man, we finally got it there. So we're ready to roll. We didn't do office trades today because portfolios come first, and uh, I, didn't, I actually didn't do anything. All I did was roll. Uh, Charlie had a trade on uh, New Relic. I just rolled that out to the next month because he was running out of time. And that's it. I, I genuinely had no time to uh, tinker with that today. So we'll be back at it tomorrow. We got a lot. Well, actually, I'm kind of happy we didn't do anything because remember we talked about yesterday that you're kind of hoping this breaks the low. So I know if I'd have been around today or had time that I would have been in stuff way too early, right? So it was a great day for the traders to just kind of go, well, let's just let this develop all day, man. They just kept punishing it and punishing and punishing it. So I think it's going to work out well, building a watch list for tomorrow. And uh, of course, we'll address it. As far as the markets today, you could see uh, kind of a nasty one out there uh, was a gap and reverse, right? So one of those days where we, we actually started higher overnight. Uh, I think the Dow was up a couple hundred points. S&P was up 20 points or so. And then it just faded right at the open too. We held those gains all through the night when the regular market volume came in started to fall down. And it was broad-based, right? So across the entire market, uh, you only had 15% of the S&P positive on the day. And uh, you only now have what, one quarter of the S&P above the 50-day. So broad pullbacks across the board, which is great if you've been waiting to buy the pullback. So we've had a lot of cash, as you guys now know. You saw our portfolios from uh, last week. Uh, we did the live wine and wealth for everybody. You see, the, when we had that cash, we're, we're ready to start putting that to work and everything. So I'm happy with the pullback there. It is officially a correction, by the way. The S&P is down over 10%. In fact, uh, by the close, I think it was 11. Yeah, you got the S&P down 11.3, the Russell down 13.2 uh, year to date, the NASDAQ down 17, so pushing towards uh, bear market there for the NASDAQ, and the Dow still doing the best, down only 8%. But when you look at the S&P, um, it's taken just over 30 days for this to happen. That's normal, actually. Uh, for a market to fall 10% in that 30-day range, it's basically average uh, or median, I should say. So it's not um, it's not anything crazy. Like we haven't fall like uh, COVID, right? During COVID, fell seven uh, seven days, we fell 10%. Okay, that's abnormal, right? But to go 30 days and have a 10% pullback is actually really normal, and um, I'm I hope it keeps going just a little bit more there. Um, in the last 75 years, there have been 58 total corrections. I think 1946 was the farthest we could go back for this. 58 total corrections. The average drop for a correction is actually 14.4%. Um, and only 15 of those 58 went further into a bear market. And a bear market, if you don't know, is just 20% lower. Um, and so extended is the key here, right? If you look at the S&P, we're likely going to break these lows, right? Maybe we have a gap down reversal tomorrow. We'll see. But... It looks as though right now the S&P is content to break the intraday low uh, from January there. And you would have a very extended market there, right? The bulls are looking for their moment to buy. And I'm going to go over that here in just a minute. They're looking for their opportunity, but the opportunity is not to guess that this previous low is going to hold. So if you're a market or index-based investor, why do you want to guess, right? You just wait till tomorrow. See, well, now you have to wait. But you wouldn't want to guess that a low is going to hold with all that aggression that we've come down to those lows at. Um, now, if we look, well, I've got my line here already. If you just draw a little little line, we go from today, and you go all the way back. When's the last time we've been this low? June of last year, right? So you've got, what, eight, eight months uh, worth of gains completely erased in the S&P. Uh, so if you've been patient, you've been looking for a pullback, here we go, right? This 
patience has paid, right? This is, this is the time you want to start looking to put some of that cash to work if you can. Uh, if we look through the NASDAQ, that took it the worst today, and it, of course, is the worst uh, year to date, down 17%. The NASDAQ did break that intraday low and closed below it, like um, yesterday. It didn't do that yesterday. Today, it breaks that low. It's same thing. You got lows that are pushing you back to now, just about May, right? We have a take about last summer is where we're seeing the NASDAQ pull back to. Uh, if you look in the Dow, there we go. It was holding up the best for a while there, but the Dow is... Uh, um, Fortunately, uh, selling off as well. And now you find yourself all the way back here, same thing. They're just basically erasing about eight months worth of gains, although they weren't as much in the Dow. Uh, the NASDAQ is more impressive because what gains you're giving back were the best gains out of all the major indices. So they went from best to actually worst at the moment. Uh, so volatility is kind of normal there to deal with. The Russell. Uh, down 13% year to date also. Uh, well, you'd have to say right now it's the strongest of the indices in terms of holding above the previous low there. Uh, the known resistance there will stay. Everybody's going to look at that on the next run or maybe if there's another attempt to go up there. So nothing uh, new there. Gold basically quiet, sitting at highs there just up a little bit. Bonds actually fell a little bit more here today. Uh, rates moving higher, of course. There's now essentially, uh, well, there is a 67% chance that the Fed raises rates a half point in March. And we talked about how they opened the door to that last uh, yesterday, actually. Or, I'm sorry, uh, Tuesday. Um, now, if you look into uh, May, so they'll meet in March and then they'll meet in May. Now there's only uh, a 45% chance. Well, there is a 45% chance that they'll raise a half point. There's nobody assuming that the May rate hike will be a quarter point or no change. Everyone says it's at least a half a percent. Those are the current betting odds on that one. 44% of people say it'll be higher than a half a percent for the May meeting. That's where we stand right now. Those numbers change constantly. Uh, looking at the price of oil, uh, pulling back just a little bit today because maybe there's going to be another strategic reserve release. Um, They're talking about doing a combined uh, sort of multi-country release like they did last time. And so we'll see how that goes. A lot of stocks that are in the energy sector. Remember, it's the best performer year to date. Uh, so if you look at the sectors, let me see what I can find real quick for you. Uh, up, still up 21%. Energy's up 21% for the year. No other sector is actually positive for the year. So it is the only and lone sector that's up 21%. It'd be totally normal for that to pull back. Now, I've got some data to share with you before we move on here. You might remember back in late 2013 uh, into 2014 there, Ukraine and Russia were, that was the headline, right? What we want to do is compare this time to last time, right? So uh, Obama was president at the time, doesn't matter, but that's who it was. Um, and that's all we could talk about. Nothing else was interesting. Is this time different or is this time the same or something like that? Um, so what happened back then, if you're not familiar, Russia wanted to annex Crimea. Essentially, they wanted to take Crimea. Remember them, Crimea? Um, now, there was a division uh, between the Ukrainians and what they call the pro-Russian separatists, right? Just the people that were all for it and then the people that weren't for it, right? The people that wanted to keep their country. Um, it got violent when the um, Ukrainian president, he actually got rid of a deal that he had with the EU and he went in favor of Russia. And so everybody got upset by that because, you know, obviously they were already divided. It'd be like in the country, Republicans, Democrats, if you, you voted Republican and the Republican was the president, all of a sudden he ditches a deal and goes with the Democrats. Well, the Republicans would be mad. Kind of like that, but we're involving the people instead. Um, now, as a peace offering, Russia actually offered, hey, we'll get rid of $15 billion in debt. Tell you what, we'll just wipe it away. It's all good there. Oh, I'll tell you what. And also your oil prices, we'll lower the oil prices as well. Um, and that didn't work, right? People didn't like that. Uh, protests continued. We saw it on TV. Uh, violence continued and everything like that. So Russia says, whoa, it, it's in our best interest. Again, I'm talking about 2013 and 14. We go into 2014, Russia says, we need to protect our interests uh, in this area. So we're going to allow the use of military force, if that's you know, what we have to do. Um, Obama then comes out and says, what? What, what, are you, what are you talking about? Re protect your interests. You have no interests. Like, and Putin totally spun that whole conversation. And so, he's, so Obama put sanctions on them. Nothing happened. Putin didn't blink. He moved forward there. By the time we get to April 2014, the uh, EU, Ukraine, Russia, uh, the United States as well, get together in Geneva, 
have a, a get together and they're trying to talk about, hey, hey, hey let, you know, let's let's try to work this thing out. Let's not go this route and everything. Uh, but then the acting president of Ukraine decides, you know what, we're going to use military force and we're going to go ahead and try to protect this area here. Um, so Ukraine holds a referendum basically shortly after there and they say, all right, uh, we are going to give up Crimea. They were officially annexed by June, I believe, of 2014 there. Russia says, cool, all right, we're going to pull back our troops. All is good. No problem there. Ukraine signs a truce deal. Everything moves on. Crimea is now independent uh, from Ukraine, and uh, you, the Ukraine actually is now considered U uh, independent from Russia. All is supposed to be good, right? It's going to be just fine. During that time, the S&P, this is what I was getting to. Sorry, I went on a history lesson there. What I was getting to is during that time, the S&P actually goes up 13.5%. I mean, there, it was volatile, but it actually went up 13.5% during that late 2013 into June of 2014. It averaged, just to give you an idea of the volatility, it averaged a half a percent move a day. So the range from high to low, about a half a percent. It's not so bad, it sounds like, right? But that was the volatility at the time. It had, during that time, two 5% drops. Nothing like we're seeing this time. This time is a little different, but it's kind of similar, right? It's obviously the same actors in the same space. Russia gets aggressive. The Ukraine gets no real support because they're not a NATO country. And so militarily, they're not really getting any help. We'll send them some money, you know, maybe try to help out here and there. But there's no military fight here with the U.S. because we're not required to protect them. Um, so we can have sanctions, although they haven't worked so far and they're not really going, they, they say they're going to get more aggressive. I don't know what that means yet, but, uh, military aid from us is just not really that likely. So it's kind of the same thing. Um, now the market is responding much differently, quite a bit, as you might be able to tell, quite a bit differently here. Um, last time though, they didn't have the issue of rates starting to move higher or at least projected to move higher there. They didn't have inflation issues. They didn't have energy prices. If you go back and look at everything around that time, uh, we had jobs still recovering there. Uh, we had low inflation, of course. And so it's a little different scenario. And we're painting this picture because I want to explain something. The uh, So far now, the average daily range since this started, when Russia started getting more aggressive, sending troops to the border there, the average daily range is twice what it was last time. We're talking 1% ranges now. So volatility is definitely there. There's no arguing about that one there. This time it's a little different story. Take a look at what we got here. Here is officially from the start of the first headline uh, from the last time. The green is 2013 and 14. And we went the, we just counted the days forward until they officially signed the truce with, uh, when Ukraine officially signed the truce with uh, Russia. Here's the performance of the S&P. In red, since we don't have that many days going by yet, we show the current performance of the market uh, this time around. The moral of the story is the market is clearly reacting negatively to this, but it's most likely also reacting to rising rates, higher inflation, tech stocks selling off. This was already happening, right? Earnings season that was just okay. You know, it wasn't all that great there. Now, what this means going forward is if you're a Democrat running for re-election in the midterm uh, elections coming up here, you got to be loving this, right? And I'm going political because I'm trying to paint a picture of what, what could happen and how the stock market could react. So if you're a Democrat, you're loving this because all the attention goes to Russia, right? Why was inflation high? As soon as they have their debates and stuff start arguing that, well, inflation was high because Russia did their thing, right? Huh. All right, why were energy costs so high? Well, it was because of Russia, right? So it's helpful to the Democrats if, if you're on that side and you want them to win. Republicans don't kind of, they don't really like this because we're no longer talking about the U.S. Every headline is Ukraine, right? You can, you can probably, you don't want to have a drinking game with the word Ukraine, right? You're in big trouble. So Republicans want to focus back on the United States. And all that means is there's going to be the tug from one side to bring the attention to problems at home. There's going to be the deflection from the other side trying to say, no, don't worry about it. At home, it was all because of Russia. We can fix it. And that sets you up for a horrible midterm election season where there are going to be more negative comments, commercials, and all that stuff. It's going to be a hot, holy mess there. So um, the moral of the story, the stock market is reacting to our problems here, not just Ukraine. And buckle your seatbelts because if you like election season, you, you, you're going to love this one. This is going to be a bitter, bitter battle there. So heads up. And, and that means more market volatility because 
at any one point, the market could be uh, it could be looking like Democrats will, uh, will sweep control. It could be maybe I don't know that they'll anybody's ever going to say it's going to be a dead heat, uh, you know, an even uh, uh, outcome. But one side or the other is always going to look like they're in control during the med midterm elections. Well, if the Republicans get in control, that's actually better for the stock market. If Democrats get in control, it's worse for the stock market because there's more uncertainty. Republicans can't stop what they want to do if, they have, if Democrats have control, which means more change in health care, more change in tech as far as, uh, you know, breaking up big tech and things like that. And so there's more uncertainty, more volatility. If Republicans get in control, there's less uncertainty because now it's basically an even match and they're probably not going to want to pass anything they're going to want to pass. They're just going to fight it out and the stock market would actually benefit from that. So expect a lot of volatility. Speaking of volatility, we've got new highs and new lows. Two new highs today, 37 new lows. Many of the new lows are in power trends down. Uh, one of the new highs was Abvi refuses to participate in any portion of this pullback so far. Looking pretty good. Facebook power downtrend at this point after being really extended. Uh, it broke the $200 price point. We haven't seen that in two years. So it's been two years since Facebook was worth $200. That means two years of your gains, poof, you know, gone just like that. Under Armour, power downtrend starting to get extended a little bit, uh, but Under Armour breaking the new lows and kind of the same theory there, just prices we haven't seen in a while. 3M, very extended, actually would be the most extended out of the new lows list uh, here today. That hit new, uh, new lows as well, and, and Honeywell, there you go, would be in second place in terms of the most extended uh, stock that made the new 52-week uh, lows list. We have some stocks in the news here, and then uh, we'll answer your questions if you happen to have any questions there. ATVI says, uh, which is Activision, uh, going through a bit of a, a, a buyout. They're going to delete, delay the release of uh, Call of Duty. The stock was down a little bit on the day, but it's basically frozen as it stands right now. Uh, Palo Alto, we talked about this one. Well, you guys brought it up yesterday that they had earnings. Uh, ultimately, it was a great response to earnings, but the market dragged it down. Also, it wasn't off the charts in terms of what they did. So Palo Alto, uh, better than expected earnings. They raised guidance and everything, uh, beat on revenue as well, and it, just not enough. Right? It was just an okay earnings report that sent the stock higher initially. All, all air at that point. Diamondback Energy um, still added a, about a percent on the day there. Uh, earnings beat better than expected. They increased their dividend 20% uh, or so, 18, 19%, somewhere in there. Uh, margins of 58% for Diamondback Energy. That's why they did so well last year. It cost them just over $10 a barrel to produce, right? That's their cost. And you know what oil is selling for now. Now Diamondback has taken the approach of some of the smaller um, producers as well and said, you know what? We're not going to spend money on producing more. We're just going to kind of soak this up and enjoy it. So they got a ton of free cash flow. They're just enjoying the high margins right now. The larger oil companies have said, expand, expand, expand. Just go get as much of this as humanly possible. Uh, nonetheless, the stock was up about 1% on the day. And we take ourselves over to Lowe's. Lowe's uh, had earnings as well, uh, better earnings than expected, revenue and guidance as well, all better. And um, they had the same comments, right? It was basically that the money is being spent by the contractors, not so much by the retailer, uh, retail uh, consumer anymore because they're hiring people to do stuff, just like Home Depot. And Tupperware was in the news. I didn't catch this one. Uh, earnings were uh, not as good as expected there. Um, they said they, a lot of their focus was on Omicron and inflation, which... I mentioned the other day, every single company that has reported earnings has mentioned inflation. Uh, I think it was 12 times, at least 12 times in their uh, conference call transcripts there. Tomorrow you've got, uh, what do we got? Do you like beer? Uh, Bud is going to report tomorrow. Uh, Discovery is going to report. Moderna is going to report. Newmont, which is actually pretty weak on earnings there. Last three earnings reports, they have traded lower. So maybe putting a little bit of a stop to what, they're, uh, what they've accomplished here lately. Uh, Wayfair is also going to report earnings. Coinbase, this will be only their third uh, report since going public, uh, since actually trading. Um, and it's hit or miss. Uh, the first one, it was down. The or first one, it was up. Second one, it was down. Dell, yeah, they're still around. Uh, Dell's going to be reporting uh, earnings after the close there. It's kind of a mixed bag. Monster as well. Uh, yeah, Monster is reporting tomorrow. Occidental Petroleum. Um, right? Does that not seem right? Yeah, Occidental Petroleum reports tomorrow. They typically move lower on earnings. 
uh, reports on Square. Uh, so this is Square's chance to maybe stop the downtrend there. Also VMware, if you're interested. Could be moving lower. Uh, there's a handful of others as well, but I'll take your questions now if you have them. And we will um, we'll get to it there. So let me go over here and move over here. What are we talking about? s and is going lower than 4,000. Yeah. Steel prices went up very little this week. First time since middle September, still down 50%. You like that? Alibaba to report. Yeah. Now's a good time. Oh, yeah, there's your Tesla fans. There you are. <laughs> uh, you don't like Ron DeSantis. Uh, it's, I don't think that's how you spell it, but it's hard not to like him living down here in Florida. Pretty happy campers here. Alibaba, yeah, yeah, I believe, um, actually, it's tomorrow though, right? Tomorrow after the close? Well, which will be overnight, yeah. Uh, Andres, can we expect a spy to test the resistance at 430 considering for a little bit since it's oversold and sell off again an additional 15%? So if you're using the SPY, you're saying 430, so you're looking at coming back to this gap up, this basically right in here, this gap up there. Um, I don't know that that happens like first, to be honest. Uh, really, the pressure feels like it's to the downside. You're kind of, kind of feeling like that gap down day tomorrow, right? Where we wake up. I mean, even after hours, we're still, or we held lower a couple points on the S and P. Sort of feels like you break this tomorrow and you have that, that sell off from all the stop losses here. Or anybody that gives up at that point, and maybe get a you know morning washout and. Um, See what happens from there. Yep, yep, yep. Jay, oh, sorry if I missed your question. What do you think of Charlie Munger's speech? I didn't catch it. Do you primarily focus on U.S. companies? No, it's just lately. Uh, that's been where the action has been for us. Um, anything in uh, Hong Kong has done really well. Uh, Brazil's done really well. Uh, obviously, Russia. I was thinking about that today, actually. What do you, what do you think, Cody? It, this is I'm putting you on the spot here. You ready? You got this? Is it un-American to buy Russia? No worries? No? Because I don't know if you guys saw, but the let's see if I can go over here. I mean, I just it came up on the screen today, and I just thought, huh, that's pretty extended. Do you see Russia? This is RSX. This is the ETF for Russia. Down 10% the other day, down another 10% today. Hypothetically, if you wanted to play a bounce there, is that, is that kind of un-American, or is that okay? Like, do people get canceled for things like that? I was looking at it, and there, wasn't, there was a lot of volatility there, so I just didn't have a moment to do anything, but I was ready to go, and maybe tomorrow it'll be down another 10%. I'm like, I'll take a shot on that, you know, something small. But that's what it is, man. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he's like, that's un-American, man. Don't do it. But he's a good old, good old boy. <laughs> yeah. Giovanni, got your pull back there. Yeah. There you go. Well, some of the ones that you had, uh, those big tech stocks, that you're going to have those big pullbacks. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's to be expected. You're not playing the low and slow stocks there, so got to be able to handle that volatility. Yep. Can you talk more about long term investing? I, uh, sure. Anything in particular? There you go. Yeah, <laughs> he's more pro-capitalist. Can't support them. I don't know. Some people are, you know, that I respect the people's decisions because some people are like, I don't want to support, you know, alcohol stocks and things like that. As an as an advisor, you have to be able to cater to that. So I get it. Some people are passionate about stuff. I had um, people that don't want to be involved in gambling stocks, things like that. Okay. Or some people that are in the military and just can't participate in certain things. So. There it is. <laughs> it's un American. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, man. Well, let's see. Oh, that's a good opinion there. Nothing un American about uh, profiteering off the wars of others. <laughs> I thought, when I thought of that earlier, I'm like, that'll get a rise out of somebody in here. Come on. I love it. Can you talk more about when to take capital gains in an IRA and long? Well, you don't have capital gains in IRAs. So you can buy, you can sell anything for a gain and it wouldn't be listed as a capital gain. So it's, it, it doesn't work. Oh, sorry about the echo. 
Uh, it doesn't work like um, a brokerage account. So no worries there. Same with a Roth, by the way. Yep. Yep. If Ukraine Russia war officially begins, how it affects the market quick set? I think we could fall to 20%. Yeah, if it were um, the old fashioned, like shock and, shock and awe type uh, start to it, which it doesn't look like it's going that way. They're taking more of the cyber approach. But if it was one of those, like the Iraq war, the middle of the night shock and awe kind of thing, that's that's horrible. You know, I think that's, that's going to be a problem for the markets there. I think you get your 20% pullback then. Yeah. Do you think of the increase of do you think of the increase in strength of the Chinese compared to the US dollar? What are we comparing to the US dollar? Just like what Chinese how do, what do you mean by Chinese? <clears throat> I mean they're definitely performing better at the moment but why would we I don't know why we would compare a market against the dollar myself there. Yeah. Uh, making money is making money, man. Do what you got to do. There you go. Well, now I know where all you guys stand. <laughs> yeah. I love it, man. Uh, wow, well, there you go. I said it, so I got to go. Somebody pointed that out the other day. And when he says, I love it, man, that's the end of the, uh, that's the end of the show. Okay. Well, uh, definitely more action, right? So there's no, this is not like the week that you want to go away and do something and say, well, I'll just check back later. I mean, it's definitely a lot to pay attention to. A lot of fun, of course. We love it. I get very excited when the markets start to wake up like this. So I will be back tomorrow. And then, of course, our Wine and Wealth tomorrow night will stay as long as we have to. I'm going to go over everything I can and maybe a few bonus things as well. Um, we will be back, of course, tomorrow to do this again. And uh, hey, last thing, man. You see the Tinder swindler? No, oh, I've heard all about I was, it. My wife was watching it. And I was kind of walking back and forth through out of it. You know that guy's out and about doing his thing? Honestly, I don't even know the concept of the show. I don't oh, know. I, won't I just spoil know it. I just know the name. I won't spoil it then. He, the guy's actually out still swindling, doing his thing, and he posts on uh, TikTok and all this stuff like, "Hey, I'm still, you know, I'm still here, I'm still living my life." Fascinating story. But I got the gist of it, you know. I don't know. Man. So, yeah, I don't have time to watch like a whole show, but I got the gist of it. Anyways, have a great uh, rest of your day. Enjoy.